Hi guys, in this session I'm going to share about digest stress of Gardu. First in the slide we will see the brief of it and then in the second slide we will look into the behavior with animation as well. First let us see the brief. Digestrous algorithm is an iterative algorithm that finds the shortest path from source vertex to all other vertices in the graph. It's as simple as that. It does not work on graphs with negative weights or edges. So if you want support for negative weights or edges, we have other algorithms like Bellman 4, so we, we, we may see that in other session. It's a greedy algorithm because it always relay on local optimum. So every iteration, if you look at it, always relay on local optimum solution. So application maps. So in a in practical case, if you're if you want to go one place to other place, you can see you can come across various paths. So using this algorithm, we can choose the choose the shortest path among them. Computer networking. So you know routing system, right? So when you send a packet from one computer to other computer, so there could be many number of paths. So we can use this path, algorithm to find the shortest path among them. The next in this slide, we are going to see what are the major thumb rules for digestrous algorithm and then we'll try to apply those rules into this animation and we'll try to visualize that as well first let us start with the rules rule one make sure there is no negative edges so we have to make sure there is no negative edges in our graph so so if you look at the edges which I weights which I chose all are positive edges if you look at any edges or weight among the vertex vertices are nodes you can see all our positive edges then actually if you want to do any search or any path on any path actually you have to choose first starting and you know final vertex so we let us choose a is our starting vertex and f is our final vertex so <clears throat> our goal is to find the shortest path from a to f okay so next set distance to source vertex as zero and set all other distance to infinity so what does it mean is first so we are choosing the distance to source vertex as zero because it is actually self-directing distance so it is by default zero and other all vertices if you look at i put it as infinite because we haven't explored it yet so there is no you know path uh, value we have from uh, a to any other nodes so if you look at right side we have uh, tabular columns here you can see uh, we have actually left side uh, we represent it as current vertex basically when we do every iteration we will keep the current vertex in this column and these are all the possible adjacent vertices so we will every row basically represent a complete iteration for you from a particular current vertex so so let us start with now rules rule two relax all vertices adjacent to the current vertex so if you look at the adjacent vertices first from starting vertex or current vertex you can see b and c are the adjacent vertices for a so we have to relax these things so basically first for that there is a you know rule and also we have actually uh, the table column we have to fill it so first what you have to do first time in the, in the iteration a to a by default i'm keeping as uh, zero because that's what it is a to b we have one adjacent and uh, a to c two we have right so for these two we have to apply the rule like this if distance of current vertex plus distance of adjacent edge is lesser than distance of adjacent vertex then what we should do we should update adjacent distance with new shortest path so that means that <coughs> here current vertex is a so here actually initial distance we have zero and plus two this is what the adjacent edge right so zero plus two is two so basically this is lesser than the distance which holder in this adjacent vertex so it is infinite so what we can do we can basically relax this one so what we do we just update that into this distance so if you here look here a to b i mean we are just representing uh like two and on the top we have mentioned a so that means that from a to b that's what it means okay so next we have one more adjacent vertex 
for from yay so let us visit that as well so if you compute that relaxing formula then you can see again d is equal to 0 0 plus 4 is 4 lesser than infinite so we can what we can do we can you know update this as well so we have put here also a to c is 4 so next we don't have any other adjacent vertices right from a so next what we have to see what next current vertex we can choose i mean with next so for that the rule 3 says choose the closest vertex as next current vertex so if you see among these two vertices which we calculated you can see b as a shortest path one so what we do so we have to choose this b as our next current vertex so before we go for it because we have to just make sure because a to d we don't have any path so we put this infinite a to e we don't have so we put it as infinite even same for f as well so first iteration we have done all those things then we have chosen b as our next current vertex so big now this i just put it in green color i mean that there is no further processing one this is actually finalized so next we have chose chosen b as our next current vertex right so now let us iterate on the adjacent vertices so b has three adjacent vertices d e c right so let us start from c so so again you apply the rule so here the current vertex is b b is equal to 2 2 plus 1 is 3 3 is lesser than lesser than 4 so i think so as per rule we can update this distance to 3 so let us update that so we updated 3 so now b to c is now basically 3 distance is 3 so but the path if you look at from c if you want to go to a c to b and b to a so that's what it says and then we have two adjacent vertices again d and e so if you look at here 2 plus 4 is 6 it is lesser than infinite so we can update here also 2 plus 2 it is 4 again we can update these two vertices with the current calculated distance so <clears throat> now if you look at 6 and 4 we have updated and then now there is no more further vertices to visit so we just put other all as as usual so i mean to say whatever was there in the previous value just we keep that here also so now we have to choose again which is the shortest one from this list so already we have chosen two i mean b so here we can't go now so rest of the thing we have three six four so among this three is the smallest one so basically this is from c part c so we'll go to three and c and we'll choose that as our next current vertex <coughs> So we have chosen C as our next current vertex. So from C, if you look at there is only one adjacent vertex. So as per rule two, we just try to relax that. So when we apply the rule three plus three is six. So that is basically uh, bigger than four. So we cannot, we no need to, you know, update that. So what we'll do, we'll keep the same, right? So we'll keep the same. And uh, next, we don't have any other adjacent vertex. So we will just put all the existing values into this new this row so now again next we have to choose the shortest smallest value so I, I think between six and four we can choose four as our next shortest one so here then our next current vertex will be e so from here again we'll apply the rule to relax all vertices so it has two adjacent vertices so so let us relax one by one so so if you look at uh, <coughs> so here it is three four plus three is seven so we are not updating that so we are just keeping the same and here if you look at four four plus two it is actually six so it is lesser than infinite so we can update that so we have now two f we have six as a path you know distance so now that's all it has so now we can you know uh, copy rest of the things into the new this is current row so we did it and now again we have to choose the next shortest one so we have two vertex or you know holding same value so we can choose the first one so if you look at the six let us choose six as our 
next one so if you look at from six so from d if you look at six plus two six plus two will be eight so eight is basically bigger than whatever we have holds already so it condition is failed so we no need to update that so what we can do we can keep the same value so we are keeping the same value here and uh, the rest we just copy as usual we do we copied all those things the final thing is actually we have in our thing is like six f this is what pending so if you from if you we can choose that as our next vertex current vertex so from there if you see there is no further vertices so we can now choose we can just copy all those things from the existing tool so if you look at this is our final you know shortest path value so here it means if here actually from f what is the shortest path we look at six right so shortest path from bertha path it is to e from where it comes e so if you go to e it is actually it says from b so if you go to b that will be r you know it is from a so that is what actually it's a, it's a shortest path if you look at in our diagram it will be something like this so this is what i said so from f you'll go to e right from f to e and uh, from e to b so e to b and b to a so basically we have visited all the varieties and we found all the shortest path on this particular graph that's all we have for today thank you for watching please do like it if it was useful thank you